This is a video about the log linear model as we see over here. So for this video, we won't worry about whether this is a structural model or a conditional mean model or a linear projection. We're just going to focus on the interpretation in particular of this beta one slope coefficient in the model. And as a reminder, when we say log in economics, we are almost always referring to the natural log function. So I'll just say log uh, to refer to natural log. So in this model, we can see the right hand side looks the same as usual. The difference is just that the left hand side is now the log of y instead of just y itself. So if we think about what happens when x increases by one unit, well this term as usual would then increase by beta one units. But instead of that being the increase in y, that's now the increase in the log of y. So the question becomes, how do we interpret a beta one unit increase in the log of y? So a one unit increase in x is associated with, again, be a little vague about the specific interpretation, a beta one uh, unit increase in log of y. So if we wanted, we could just stop there and say a one unit increase in x is associated with a beta one log point increase in y or log unit increase in y. But we can take it further to think about what does that mean in terms of y itself. So for example, let's imagine the true beta one is point, sorry, point zero two. Okay, so that means we have a 0 0.02 increase in log y. So if we think about the initial level of y and then the new level of y, which will be higher because beta 1 is positive, this means the uh, 0 0.02 is the log of the new y minus the log of the original y. And by these nice properties of the log function, we can combine that as the log of the ratio y new over y original. And we can also note that 0 0.02 on the left is the same as the log of 1.0202 and so on. So if we look at the first far left, we have the log of 1.0202 equals something equals something equals log of this ratio. So the insides must be equal. So in other words, y nu divided by y original is equal to this 1.0202 and so on. Uh, 
So in other words, our new y is 1.0202 times bigger than our original y. And we can also see that this is very close to just being 1.02 times bigger than the original y, in which case that would be exactly a 2% increase from the original y to the new y. So we can see that approximation uh, is very good in this case because beta 1 is very close to 0. So beta 1 being 0 0.02, that 0 0.02 is basically ending up over here approximately. So we have an approximate 2% increase in y associated with a 1 unit increase in x. So again, the overall uh, sort of benefit of this log linear model is we can get unit changes in x to be associated with percent changes in y. And if beta 1 is small enough, we can use that uh, approximate interpretation. But otherwise, we can use this exact interpretation. Um, and we can see, you know, if x increases by, for example, 50 units, then uh, beta 1 x increases by 50 beta 1. That's now no longer very close to zero. So our uh, approximation would not work very well, but we can still use the formula in the book to get the exact percentage increase in y associated with that uh, particular increase in x. Uh, the reason the approximation only works well sometimes is basically we have this log function that's sort of this curve, sorry, doesn't actually go down, sort of curve function like that. And if we zoom in on just a tiny part of it, like this, then we see it's very, very close to being just a straight line. And if we were to approximate it with a straight line, we would do uh, very well. Maybe it's more, uh, more like that, right? Almost exactly the same in the same way that 1.0202 is almost exactly the same as 1.02. But when we try to look at larger changes in x, like if we want to move from over here all the way over here, if we try to do a straight line, uh, that's not going to be a good approximation anymore.